Okay, so welcome everybody to module one. Super, super excited to get you going on this journey. I'm going to introduce you now to Spa Professionals Guild, even though some of you have been introduced to it. I'm just going to go through a little recap about the community, the communication methods, um, and then I'm going to dive into what module one is all about and why we start where we start. And then I'll quickly show you what's coming your way in terms of the rest of the modules. Hope to get you super excited for that. And then we're done for today. Okay, so first things first, everybody, um, I keep reminding you about this. I really, really want to encourage you to post to social media as much as possible. Find interesting slides that you like. I've got a few slides that have different quotes. Um, and just go onto social media and tell your clients in the world what it is that you're doing and how you are growing. Um, I don't know if anybody has seen um, one of our community members. Her name is Rieta. She's from Namibia. And she posts every time she does a module, she posts, or even the group coaching, she posts five or six slides. The amount of conversation that those posts gets her is incredible. And she says that the first thing her clients ask her when they walk in is, okay, so tell us what you learned at that session. And, oh, that slide was really interesting, that quote, and what did they say? So it really is a conversation starter. It also shows your clients, it shows your staff that you are invested in them because you are learning and growing and evolving in your business and in the industry. So don't be shy to go and post what you're doing. In fact, on the contrary, every single client that we work with in terms of consulting, we, we encourage them very strongly to post to social media as much as possible all of their learning endeavors and all of their staff like when they have a staff huddle every now and again to post that to social media. Clients want to see how invested in your own self and in your staff you are. So go for it. Okay, I'm going to show you the pages. Now we're going to, so some of you did attend last week's session. So this will be a recap and some of you didn't. So this will be um, completely new to you. Okay, but just a recap on all the social media handles that you please need to belong to. Okay, which I'll take you through them in an absolute second. The reason for this slide is to tell you that you are about to embark on a journey like this goldfish that you see in front of you. And that journey is the following. You are going to jump out of your comfort zone. You're going to jump out of a fishbowl that is full of fish that are doing the same thing they're swimming round and round in circles and that's all they do all the time and it's quite a crowded fishbowl there's not too much scope to move and change and grow even because you can only get as big as the the space in the fishbowl will allow you to get right and you are about to start your journey of jumping into clear clean free, empty waters. And you are going to grow as big as you want because there's no crowded spaces in there. You're also going to have space and freedom to try, maneuver, and do things in a fresh and clear environment. So well done for making the decision to upgrade your business toolbox, because this is exactly what the next couple of months ahead of you is going to be. And you really need to look at it as what it is. You are opening a box and you are going to uncover different tools to help you run your business. Now, this is not to say that you don't know how to run a business. You wouldn't be on this call. You wouldn't own the businesses that you own if you didn't know how to run the business. 
But what's happening here in these next couple of months is that we are going to give you tools. We're going to give you inspiration. We're going to give you a community to belong to that is going to take you from a place of already knowing how to run a business to a place of running that business on fire, flying, having freedom of cash flow, having happy staff, having clients that don't stop raving about your business and having a business that absolutely everybody wants to own or everybody wants to go and have their services done there. So that's the goal in the next couple of months. We call it the management transformation because that is exactly what it is. Management in our industry 10 years ago is absolutely nothing like what it is today. In fact, I've been spending the last two years trying to wrap my mind around these changes because I got so comfortable and accustomed to how spa businesses were supposed to be run. And in fact, this very course that we have put online, we used to give it in person 10 years ago. When I started looking at the information and at the content, I basically had to start from scratch and rewrite this entire course, which did frustrate me a little because it took me 10 years to write the first course. And then I noticed, oh my goodness me, this information is so outdated that I'm going to, I'm going to have to start it from scratch again and I'm going to have to update all the tools and all the information that I'm sharing. And why? Because business evolves all the time. And we've had a global pandemic that has put the natural evolution of a business on speed dial. That's what it's done. It has forced us to change the way that we run our businesses. Never mind the fact that our new workforce has changed and our new workforce has made us need to change the way that we deal with them. Then we got the global pandemic on our shoulders, which has now changed consumer behavior. So now we are dealing with two evolutions in business in the last 10 years, and they are pretty, pretty drastic. Okay. And that's really what this next journey of yours is about is about taking things that you already knew how to do and adapting them so that they work better for you and you become much more efficient and effective in how you run your business. So I'm not sure all of you have seen this because I really only show it at the start of module one. I think you all know what the word is. Who remembers what our word for 2021 is? So every year we choose a word and last year, our word was obsessed, was to become obsessed with our, with our businesses, with our staff, with our lives. And this year, does anybody remember who the, or what the 2021 word is? Let me know. Type it in the chat box. There's a few of you here who should know it off by heart. Come on, off you go. Type in the chat box. What is our 2021 word? Does nobody remember? Good grief. Sharita, you should remember. Do you remember the word? Well done. Well done. Okay, that word is movement. I have a video clip that Sharita's obviously seen. And Sharita, you're going to love seeing it again because every time I see it, it makes my heart so warm and fuzzy. Because this video clip really describes why this word was chosen for this year. So have a look. This video clip, just by the way, to give you a little bit of history, I have family that live in South America, in Sao Paulo. My cousin lives there. And she sent me this clip on the 1st of January, on New Year's Day. And I was tossing up between two or three words to choose for 2021. But when I saw this video clip, it changed my mind instantly. So she actually helped us choose this word and you'll see now why in a second this word is so powerful and so right 
for us and our industry. So enjoy this clip. Dear friend, do you mind if I have a word? It won't take much of your time, I promise. Let's skip the introductions as we know each other quite well. Yes, it's me speaking, January the 1st. I know it hasn't been exactly easy since we last saw each other, but I'm here to remind you that we're about to meet again very soon. And so I thought I'd share a piece of advice, a word really, but one that will help you get through the other 364 days with ease. And the word is movement. That's right, movement. I'd love to see you start the year doing just that, moving. And I don't just mean the exercise kind, I mean movement of the spirit, of the soul. Move, so you can move someone else's heart. Move, so you can find the inspiration to create, to invent. You see, when you're moving, there's no time for fear, for doubts, because it pushes you forward, makes you stronger, wiser. So take my word, write it down on a napkin, put it in your smartphone. Movement inspires. And when put into action, it will make every single day of your year count. Starting with me, your friend, January the 1st. How beautiful. I mean, how unbelievable is that video clip and so real for what we're all experiencing right now. Thank you. So let's quickly recap. So that's our word, everyone. What do you think of the word? Go into the chat box. Let me know. What do you think of that word, movement? How do you feel about it? Do you love it? Okay, I'm going to let you all type there. Let me know what you think of that word, everyone. Lindy says it's powerful. Yeah, very powerful. Shazi, amazing. Beautiful. Okay, so your communication methods, just to recap it, will be on email. Please make sure that you are getting our once a week emails. They are part of your learning process, okay? Because in those emails every week is some tool for you to use. They're not just how, how you're doing. It's some valuable tool that you can implement almost instantly. There's either a download, there's always something totally valuable for you there. Then we have our members only um, Facebook group. I'm gonna show you a picture of that in a second. Please make sure that you have requested membership access there and Shani will approve it on the back end. And then we have our full community WhatsApp group that I've actually put most of you on. I think there's just one or two still to, to add on to there. And then please make sure that you've also subscribed to the YouTube channel because our video clips go up there once a week as well. Okay, so here's what the pages look like. Please, everybody, make sure that if you haven't, you take out your phones now and you go and you like those pages. Hello, beautiful Shai. You look so gorgeous. She's multitasking from her car. Love it. Okay, so there's Spa Professionals Guild. Please make sure you've liked that Facebook page. Instagram, same story, Spa Professionals Guild. That's what it looks like. Then Spa Business Coach Online, that's just my coaching page. Please go and follow that one. And Spa Professionals Guild on YouTube as well. And then there is the private member lounge. Okay, this one is only for members and learners. So it's not open to everybody else. Okay, Nikita says movement makes me feel like growing. Can't grow if you don't move, 100%. And that's why that word is so powerful and we love it so much. Okay, so you should know this by now, but I cover all of this in module one. So we have three forbidden words. It always used to be two and we've got another one that has been added on. Who remembers what our forbidden words are? So in other words, we make an oath 
never to say those words ever, ever, ever in our communication to each other. And it's so funny because I've been found out twice having said them. Okay, well done, Lindy. Can't is one. Yes, buddy, unfortunately, is the other. And the last one, my favorite one of all. Who remembers the last one? Let's see if anyone can get that word. Okay. The reason these words are forbidden is because our words are our thoughts manifested. And the second we say one of those words, it hinders us. It puts the brakes on, which is not what we want, because we want to keep moving. Remember, our word is movement. So by saying I can't means you're not moving. By saying unfortunately means you're not moving. And the last word I'm going to show you in a minute. So the first word was unfortunately, and I want to quickly show you some examples. And if you want, you can take a screenshot to show your staff, but there are some ways where we use this word without thinking. And in fact, one of my next newsletters talks into this word a lot, but it's the word unfortunately. And a lot of us say it in the most polite way, but I want you to think for one second, and I'm going to read these examples to you. So client phones in, can I book for a facial tomorrow at 10? Very politely, the front desk manager, whoever says, oh, I'm so sorry, Marisa. Unfortunately, we don't have availability at that time. Can I help you another time? Okay, so now I want you to think about that word. Unfortunately, you started your your communication with the client with a negative word. Just think about it. What I'm saying is, why don't you say the same thing with positive words? For example, Marisa, we can help you with that amazing facial that you're looking for at 1 p.m. Does that work for you? How does that sound? Okay, so we're saying the same thing, but we're not using the negative word. Another one I hear so often in spas and salons, and um, can I please buy my normal cleanser? I'm out of stock or I'm, I'm done. It's finished at home. Therapist says, oh, unfortunately, we don't have that one in stock. We sold out. I can order it in for you and I'll let you know when it will be here. Okay. Same answer in positive language. We are sold out of that one. So I can either help you with another amazing cleanser option or I can order yours in today and I will have it delivered to you in a few days time. Do you see the difference? We're saying the same thing ultimately, but it's using positive language, okay? And that is so important. And I just wanna tell you something about positive language. It takes practice and time. But the first thing that you have to resolve to do is never to use these forbidden words because then you'll start looking for ways to replace it. And the last word, uh, sorry, the, next, the second word is can't, okay? Because the bottom line is you really can. And the last word is this word that I absolutely hate. I really do. And I don't like to say the word hate because it's such a negative word, is the word try. And this video clip I love because he's gonna tell you in one sentence why we may never use that word try. Here we go. I'm not going to play the whole clip. I'm going to get the point across and then I'm going to stop him because he waffles on for a bit. Okay. This is a word that absolutely drives me bananas. And even my teacher, Dr. Mike Mendel, addresses this in his Hypnosis Academy. And it's the word try. Even Yoda says, do or do not. There is no try. And in our house, we don't have a swear jar. We have a try jar. Try implies failure. If at first you don't succeed, try, try, try again. Hey, Pat, did you guys win the hockey game the other night? Oh, we tried real hard. So you lost. We really tried hard, but you failed to win. Yes, we failed. Try implies failure. It's an excuse for all sorts of things. I love to play hockey. Now, it's just gentleman hockey, but our team really loves to win. And I used to play with this incredible hockey player, and I'm going to call him Jim. A lot of my hockey buddies watch these videos, so I got to be pretty careful with what I say. 
But every time Jim played, he scored two or three goals, always had a couple of assists, but didn't really care if he played or not. When he showed up, our team would always ask him, Jim, are you coming to the next game? His famous words as he left the dressing room were, I'll try to make it. Hardly ever showed up. Finally, we made it through the playoffs. Jim there maybe a quarter of the time. And we made it to the championship game. So this was serious. I personally called Jim up and I said, Jim, we're in the finals, buddy. Really need you at that game Saturday night. The team we are playing is a bit stronger than us. But with you there, we will surely win. Can I count on you? I'll try to make it. But Jim, this is the finals. We need you. I'll try, pal. Okay, please do what you can to be there. Now, in the back of my mind, I'm saying, I heard this before. But surely, it's the finals, and he will do whatever he can to be there. So Saturday night comes around. No gym. We end up tying 3-3, and we lose in overtime. Now, if Jim would have been there, we would have won. He always scores a few goals and gets us a couple of assists. He's the best player in the league. Two weeks after, I seen Jim at the grocery store. And he asked me, hey, Jason, uh, how did we do in the finals? I said, we lost in overtime. Where were you? Oh, yeah, I, I was going to go, but then I ended up uh, watching The Bachelor. And what, what do you think my response was to that? to give him a fist pump and say, I'm so happy that you were watching The Bachelor, Jim. Who did he end up giving the final rose to? Thank you so much for trying to make the game, Jim. I'm so happy you at least tried for us. No, I don't ever want to play hockey with that guy again. Don't accept try from people and don't offer it either. If someone says, I'll try, immediately say, is that a yes or is that a no? No hard feel. Okay, so there you have it. And this is a famous word in our industry with our staff. And maybe you all relate to the comment I'm going to make. But when you ask your therapist, okay, everybody focus, ready to make your target for the day. What do they always say? Yes, I'll try my best. Okay, that sends me through the roof. That I'll try my best sends me through the roof. So I do what this guy says. Is that a yes, you will make your target? Or is that a no, you won't make your target? Because the word try tells me that you're not going to do it. Because afterwards, if you don't, you have an excuse. So everyone, I want to encourage you today to have your try jar, your can't jar, and your unfortunately jar in your spas. Those three words from today should actually be forbidden language in your business. They get left the front door. Anybody wants to say it, they must go outside and say it in the street because they don't belong in a business that is in a growth mindset and that is ready to take on all these changes and evolution in this management transformation. Okay, so let's keep going. Your checklist that you need. A commitment to getting the work done. There's not a lot of work in this um, module, okay? And I'm going to take you through every single uh, task that you have to complete. Keep an open, positive, and energetic mindset. A can-do attitude. Please understand, everybody, we're all busy. All of us. We're all crazy. It's just going to get crazier. In fact, Kim, who is sitting on this call right now, is on the verge of opening a spa, okay? So, and all of you who have opened your spas know what it's like those last two weeks leading to opening date. So we are all running around like headless chickens together, but it's wonderful. So we're all busy. However, the business relies on these tools for it to run efficiently. So as long as you keep that in the back of your mind, this will be a priority. Set your deadlines. And very importantly, one thing I want everybody to all be on the same page about is holding ourselves accountable. This is something that you're going to do for yourself. I can't do it for you. 
but you need to have a very strong sense of accountability because as the leader and the captain of the ship, if you don't hold yourself accountable, it's not going to flow downwards to the rest of the team. Okay. All righty. Okay, so what's going to happen in module one is called self-reflection. You are going to take the next few weeks to figure out who you are. I'm sure a lot of you are saying, yeah, but I know who I am. And the great thing is you're going to do some of these questionnaires. And you're going to do some of these exercises. You're going to do some of these personality tests. And you're going to think, oh, my soul, is that really how I manage? Is that really the kind of culture that I, that I, that I instinctively put in my business? And the reason we do this is, and, I've, and I, you might have heard me say this before, the stronger the foundation of your building, and your building is your business, okay? So let's just repeat that. The stronger the foundation, okay? And you are the foundation. The building is the business, but you as the leader are the foundation. Now, the stronger that foundation is, the taller we can build the building. So the more you can grow. But if that foundation is not solid, I'm sorry to tell you, but that business will stay where it is for the next couple of years. It's just how it is. So there's two gorgeous quotes here that I love. Self-reflection is a humbling process. It is essential to find out why you think, say, and do, do certain things. And only once you figure that out, then you can better yourself. And I also love this one. You can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backward. Okay, so we can only fix and make adjustments and corrections if we look back and we say, okay, so this is how I've done it and this is how I've communicated and this is how I've managed and this is the culture I have in my business to make those corrections for moving forward. Okay, so here come your tasks, everybody. Very simple, very easy stuff, but they need to get done, right? So the first thing you're going to do is fill in, if you haven't already done it, very importantly, is the um, enrollment form and questionnaire. You need to please sit for an hour. Don't start this and then say, okay, I'll get back to it tomorrow night or whenever. I'd like you to finish this in one seating because the questions are very important. Enrollment form is easy that's name surname blah 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 that's not what I'm worried about what I'm worried about not worried about what I'd like to encourage is that the questionnaire gets completed in lots and lots and lots and lots of detail okay the next one is a self-assessment questionnaire I love this and the reason I love this is all of these questions are here not for us to look at them and then give you advice no these questions are here for you to discover as you're answering them. And you're going to see as you're answering them, you're going to go, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. This is where, the, oh really, okay. Oh, I am a procrastinator. Oh no, I don't manage my time well. This is your self-discovery and your, your, the start to that journey that you're going to take. Again, please don't do this in sections. It requires about an hour uh, some finish it in 40 minutes. Don't do it in sections. Sit down and get through every single question. And then please answer expanded answers. So not just, yes, I am a good listener. I want more than that. I am a good listener because, and give some, some meat, add some meat onto your answers. Okay, my favorite task of all, and some of you might go, oh no, I can't believe you're making us do this but you're gonna love me for it when you've done it. So go into the chat box. Who of you have ever completed a job description canvas for yourself as the owner of your business or the manager of the business? Who of you have done a job description canvas or a job description for yourself? Go into the chat box. Let me know who's done one before. Come everybody, you're not very chatty. Get those fingers going. Please give me some feedback. 
I can see this is going to be my unchatty group, which I'm going to have to chatty you up, everyone. Okay. Who has Nikita hasn't? Okay. Yay. I'm glad you haven't. Everybody asked me to do everything anyway. <laughs> That's very funny. <laughs> Anybody else? Who has or hasn't? You can go, no, I haven't. You can say that. Because I'm, okay. Kani also hasn't. Anybody else? Who has or hasn't? I haven't, but all is in the head. Buddy, I haven't. Okay, who else, who else? Laverne, I haven't. Okay, so I'm going to show you two examples. Nkobile, hello, Nkobile. So nice to have you here, I didn't see you join. Okay, Nkobile is saying, no, I haven't. Okay, so let me explain why this is so important. This is so important because of the answers that each of you have put in that chat box, that you have never done this before. Now I want to ask you something. When you employ somebody, do you issue them with a job description? And I'm sure you're all going to say, yes, of course we do. We tell them what their primary responsibilities are, their secondary responsibilities. And why do you do that? So that they know and that they are focused and that there's no blue lines. So now let me ask you, why does the captain of the ship not have that? And in more detail than anybody else, why? So that's quite an interesting question if you think about it. And the reason we make you do this is because we want you to focus on and, and to sit down and take the time to think about, this resonates with a frying the egg. <laughs> Yes, exactly, with a frying the egg analogy. Okay, so I'm going to show you two examples here. We give you the exact headings to use in your job description canvas. I don't want you to just sit down and say, okay, this is what I do. Because like Sha said earlier on, you all do everything anyway, don't you? Okay, but that's not the reason for this. Okay, the reason for this is because... You should not be doing everything. You should not. You want to have a business that is focused on growth and evolution. Well, then you can't be doing everything. Otherwise, you will never get the growth that you want. So this job description is going to take you back two notches and say, right, this is actually what I should be focused on, not all this other junk. So this was a lady who's actually not in our industry. She's a sales director. She is in our community and she wanted to join because the content of the course resonates with her. She was, uh, she's actually now gone to the UK, but she used to be the sales director of an eventing company. And she used the headings that we gave her. Okay, this is me. She has to write down some points about herself as an individual, about her personality, her minimum requirements. And that's one of the headings that we give. What are the minimum requirements that you need to complete your job? So if it is an understanding of an Excel spreadsheet, you need to put that in. Okay. Her key objectives, her number one objectives. All right. And that is not to open the salon every day. No, okay. So the key objectives is what has to happen? What are you directly responsible for that if it doesn't happen, this business doesn't go forward? Then her key competencies, what she delegates, okay. Again, Mariana wasn't the greatest delegator, but it was very nice for her to sit down and write what she should be delegating, okay, as a reminder to her. And then who her team is and her duties. Okay, these can be secondary duties. Now I'm going to show you one. And you have got access to these, by the way. They are in the Facebook member lounge of a managing director of a spa in KZN. Okay, this is Michelle. And she's also in our community. She owns Symbiosis Spas. There's two branches in Belito. And here she wrote an overview. And you can see Michelle's put a lot of detail into hers. Her key objectives, 
her key competencies, her day-to-day -day responsibilities in her principal duties, and her minimum requirements. Okay, so very interesting for Michelle, she wrote there are no minimum requirements. To be a successful owner or manager, you need to oversee and be responsible for the entire organization in every single area. Okay, it doesn't mean yours needs to be the same. I'm giving you examples. What I want to encourage is that you almost see this as a little school project that you've got to get a bit creative, okay? And we've got a few examples on the Facebook um, member lounge. Instead of just going to jot down on a piece of paper or, you know, try and get a bit creative because it gets you excited about this. And it is a task that when it is completed, makes you feel like, okay, right, I have direction, I know what I'm doing here. Okay, next, I love this exercise. I love it. And in fact, I want to encourage you to do this. Every time you have a bit of a staff turnover, you need to get this done every single time. So what happens with this is you take this piece of paper and you rank you as the manager or the owner are going to put from the most important to the least important what you think your employees want in their place of work. So what do you think is most important to them, right? So this particular exercise that was done by one of the managers said job security, appreciation for work done is number two. They put two things at number two. So this is incorrectly done because this should have been number three, okay? And that is loyalty to workers, good working conditions. Okay, then you give the same sheet to your staff, blank, and you get each one to fill it in individually. This is not a group exercise. So if I were you, I'd put it in their pigeonholes and let them go and do it privately at home and say, please send this, give this back to me tomorrow. The best part for you is when you put it all together. So this is giving you an example from one of the completed tasks, okay? The owner or the, the manager thought that good wages was most important among her staff complement. Job security, number two, and growth opportunities, number three. What came back from her exercise is not what she thought. Number one was to be appreciated. They want to feel included in the know, know what's going on in the business, and empathy with personal problems. I mean, how unbelievable is that? So we think money is the be all and end all, and sometimes it isn't, okay? So this is such an interesting exercise because it really gets you to a place that staff don't openly talk about, and they don't, whether you like it or not. So give them this piece of paper and you start your journey, your journey of discovery, okay, with your staff. The next one. Who has completed a SWOT analysis for themselves? Personal SWOT analysis, not a business one. Go into the chat box, let me know. Say yes or no, yes or no, that's all. Yes or no, yes or no SWOT analysis. Okay, Nikita, no. Sharita, of course, because you had to do it. Good girl. Lindy's done one, nice, okay. Kanye says no, and Shai, yes. Okay, so again, this is very Nkobile, no, Bridget, yes. So this SWOT analysis, everybody, just to be clear, is on you as an individual. It is not on your business. Okay, so you're going to sit, and this is your personal weaknesses, your personal strengths as the manager or owner your personal opportunities and your personal threats, okay? So enjoy it, because this one is quite a tough one, but once you get going, it's quite exciting. And then some of my favorite sections is the personality tests. Has anybody ever done an Enneagram test on themselves? Go into the chat box, say yes or no. Anybody ever done a personality test that looks like this on themselves? It's called Enneagram. Say yes or no. Bridget says no, 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 no. Has anybody ever done one? Yes, Jody says yes, okay, cool. 
I'm a seven. Oh, okay, nice. So this was very interesting for me because I was introduced to Enneagram at management level. So we don't really do Enneagram on, on levels below um, management. There's another personality test that in the staff module you have access to that I encourage that you do it with your staff. But anybody who's even a head therapist or a manager, I definitely would put them through an Enneagram test and you as the owner. Very, very importantly, because it actually gives you direction on how each of you communicate and it makes you, the most important part for me of this is it makes you aware of how your people in management communicate and how they are, what they are like. And that is very vital information for you to have. Okay, so this is quite, it's a fun section, but it really is a nice section. And then a new chapter that we added here. This wasn't part of module one, but because module one came out with um, uh, time delegation, not delegate, time management, as a massive, massive challenge for all owners. They just couldn't get around to the things that are important. Their day almost seems to run away with them. Is we, in, we introduced this chapter that was actually written for us by Andy. He is in our community and he's one of the directors of the Six Senses Group. And I love this chapter because it really is about choosing the important. I'm going to show you a couple of um, slides that you're going to find in it. But Andy identifies four key areas in which you spend your time as a spa manager or as a spa owner. Okay? You'll go through them in detail. But number one is called the manage area. So they are crisis and pressing problems. Okay? And number one, and oh, I nearly said the word. I nearly said the word. Okay, I'm not going to say it. But number one is where a lot of our managers and owners find themselves spending most of their time because they're dealing with pressing problems and crisis. Okay? And we need to move you out of that because that's not where you grow. You just don't grow if you sit in number one. Okay. Number two is focus. I'm going to show you where you should be sitting on. So focus on strategies and values, okay? And this is things that really help grow your business, bottom line. They, they are the ones that give you the growth. Number three is avoiding interruptions and busy work. And number four is limiting, trivial and wasteful stuff, okay? So the quadrant where you should be choosing to spend your time in because it is the quadrant that generates the most money is in quadrant number two. And that we refer to it as the exceptional. So quadrant number one is called the immediate and you have to spend time there. Quadrant number two is where if you start to spend more time there, you'll see that the, the revenue gets bigger and bigger and better because it's strategy time. It's not putting out fires time. Then quadrant number three is distraction time. And sometimes we have to deal with that, but we should try and not spend any time there. And quadrant number four, we should spend no time. Okay, but we take you through that. And the task that you do to show you where you are spending your time, because I can tell you what's going to happen to all of you. You're going to look at all this content, especially this, and you're going to say, well, I definitely spend most of my time in number one for example, okay? The strange thing is, once you've done this for three days, you're going to do an hour log of how you spend your time. You are going to be frightened of which quadrant you find yourself in. And then you'll know what to do at the end of this. You will know what you need to do to sort out your time management, okay? So that's that one. That's it, everyone. There's your tasks and submissions for module one. So it's really exciting. It's short, it's sweet, but it is introspective and it is focused on you as an individual. Okay. So really, it's about, again, holding yourself accountable. How committed are you to 
absolutely getting the work done. And then I quickly want to show you what's coming your way. Okay, so the next module that you jump into is the staff module, which most of you saw that module meeting last week. It is very exciting. Focus on improving yourselves before the team, 100%, Shai. Because at the end of the day, if we dive into the tools, but the foundation isn't solid, there's no point in moving on. There really isn't. So this, you get, you start getting lots of tools in module number two, lots, which I encourage you to implement as soon, as soon, as soon as possible, okay? And you went through those, but I'll take you through them again. Module number three is revenue management, very exciting module. So really it is about um, having a, a form of financial intelligence. We don't want to turn you into accountants, looking at a profit and loss and forecasting a profit and loss as well. Um, analyzing the numbers, what your cash up sheet should look like and also making use of a promotions profit calculator. Module number four is full of tools. Oh, I love module four. The daily business analysis tool, my favorite tool. Manager checklists, marketing planner templates, promotion profit calculator, using your brand partners and trainers to full use. KPIs, effective bookings. I love effective booking section and the front desk checklist. Okay. And then module number five is everybody's nightmare. Oh my gosh, it's my nightmare but it is so important. And this is standard operating procedures. And then module number six, very exciting module, marketing and sales. And module number seven, also very exciting, is the social media and online module. So we really leave the marketing and the, and the social media to the end when a lot of you wanna do that first, but that's not the right order to work in. Okay, we have to get the systems right first. There is no point in us giving you ideas on how to market and sell and create packages and powerful social media posts when your foundation is not right and the basics are not in place because that's when you're going to feel like a headless chicken all the time, chasing the issues and the problems. Okay, so I hope that makes sense, everyone. Please don't forget, there are two group coaching sessions a month. That's all the time we ask of you, two hours a month. So the next one is on the 17th of August, 3 p.m. And the one after that, the 31st of August, 3 p.m. So we strive to have at least one guest speaker a month. So we've got Andy coming to chat to us. He's just finalizing whether he's chatting on the 17th or the 31st. Um, for those of you who have heard Andy speak before, he's that um, director of Six Senses. He's unbelievable. He's a wealth of you just want to suck in all the information he gives you. And he's just gone through a setup of an absolutely new business in Ibiza. And I asked him to please chat to us about how dealing with staff in a pandemic and to give us some tips and ideas on that. Okay. All of you remember, you may invite one industry um, colleague to attend each of the group coaching sessions. We really encourage you to do that. And we want you to help us please to grow our community because that really is what it's what this is all about. Because if everybody and we uplift the entire industry, then we all grow, right? And then the last words that I have for you today is to keep moving. And when you have a look at this picture, what word comes to your mind immediately. There must be some word that comes into your brain. Thank you, Sharita. It was lovely to see you too. When you, when you have a look at this picture of movement, what word comes into your brain? Go into the chat box and let us know. What word comes into your brain? Energy. Yes. Nikita sees team. Love it. Okay. Shy sees fly, love it. Kim sees alive. Lindy sees fit. Laverne sees action. Okay. Uh, Kanye sees working together. So can you see how such a powerful word, movement, can inspire so much inside of us to get words like this out? And all of us see something different in a picture 
that is depicting of movement. And that's why I love that word so much for us for this year. And I'd like you to take that word into your businesses and into your staff's brain and for everybody to be on the same page of that, keep moving and keep working together. Okay, everyone. So that's the end of our session today on time. How's everybody feeling? Please go into the chat box. Give me a word, a checkout word. How are you feeling about this first module? What word comes to mind? Buddy is amped. Yay. Kim, thank you. Inspired. Kanye, excited. Shy, thank you, Marisa. Motivated. Awesome. Bridget, hope, love it. That's gorgeous. What a nice word. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, some more words, everyone. Some more words. And then we're going to say our goodbyes. Nkobile, excited. Yay. Love it, love it, love it. Nikita, excited. Awesome. Jody, thank you, feeling inspired, lovely. Okay, everybody, so off you go. Start with your work tonight, okay? Don't, remember, speed of implementation, hey? So don't dawdle, get cracking, and enjoy the, the self-discovery because that's really the journey that you're going on now. You're going to discover things about your business alter ego, if I can call it that, um, that you probably didn't know or you knew but didn't realize it affected the way that you run your business. Okay, so enjoy it. Please, um, Shani and I are on the other side of WhatsApp. <laughs> Shy, you're crazy. <clears throat> Sasha Fierce. Is that your alter ego name? Is that your business alter ego name? Sasha Fierce. Wow, I love it. Shy Fierce. Okay, I like Sasha too. It sounds pretty, you know. <laughs> okay, everyone. So Shani and I on the other side of WhatsApp, on the other side of email. Um, everybody, you should have got your um, login details so that you can go online. It's Beyonce's alter ego name. Oh, my hat. Okay, we'll let her keep that one and we'll make a new one for you. So um, you should all have your login details. If you don't, please reach out to us or to Shani so that we can just make sure that on the back end, um, everything is working correctly. And basically, I mean, um, I think, not I think, Shani has done a small tutorial that shows you how to navigate the site. It is super, super easy, how to download your tasks and, and submit them and things like that, okay. So cheers, everybody. I'll see you next week because the 17th is our next coaching session. Okay. Ciao. Go make magic, everyone.